Hello students, once again I welcome you all in my new video for class 8th students and students this is the fourth one from the chapter microorganisms and viruses friend and foe. Before we start today's discussion let's talk about the assignment that was given in the previous video and you know the previous video was related with the disease causing microbes in human beings so we were discussing in the previous video that the negative impacts of microorganisms on human beings in which we have completed the first one what are the disease causing microbes and how they are going to cause diseases in the human's body and their mode of transmission and what precautions we must take to protect ourselves from being infected by these communicable diseases. So I hope you all have done the assignments, the questions related with the previous video but if still some of you are facing any trouble to solve that questions I will provide you their answers in today's video at the end. So let's start today's discussion with the other aspect that is what spoiling of food by our microorganisms. So student the first topic is food spoilage. Actually food spoilage is the process in which food products become unsuitable to ingest by consumers. You know students all living beings including microbes need energy to carry their all vital activities. So microbes also gain energy from the food materials and they are going to release some chemical substances, some enzymes to digest the food materials and they can absorb nutrient. So these chemical substances released by microorganisms sometimes they become toxic for the consumers and these toxic substances cause some sickness in the consumers known as food poisoning. So first we will see what are the characteristic feature by which we can examine or we can know that our food is already spoiled. So unpleasant smell, bad taste and change in color indicates that already the food is spoiled by some microbes and we must avoid taking such type of food materials. So the next topic is food poisoning. Actually food poisoning is what? Food borne illness. So any disease if uh, it is caused due to the ingestion of food is known as food poisoning and the persons who are going to take uh, spoiled food materials they will feel symptoms like headache, fever, vomiting or diarrhea. So we must avoid taking spoiled food materials and we must take only healthy and fresh food materials. So we must protect our food from getting spoiled and we are having a lot of methods to protect our food materials from being infected from microbes. So we will see first what is food preservation. Actually food preservation is a method of preventing food spoilage by using physical or chemical methods. So we will see here what are the physical and chemical methods through which we are going to avoid food spoilage. First one is by cooling. Students you may have observed your mother while placing the leftover food materials in the refrigerator. Why she is doing this? Yes, just because to avoid the food spoiling because if the food will be placed outside there may be a chance of spoiling food with the help of microbes. So food materials are placed inside the refrigerator because at low temperature the microbes present in the food materials they become inactive and they do not multiply. So our food materials are protected from placing them inside the refrigerator or 
providing them a cool temperature. Vegetables, fruits, milk, curd and cooked food materials are protected by this method. The next one is what? Posturization. Actually, posturization is a method that was developed by a scientist, Louis Pasteur. And uh, he developed this method only specially to preserve milk. But nowadays, this method is used for a number of food products. So, in this method, first, the food items are heated at near about 60 to 65 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. And then immediately the food materials are cooled down to kill the microbes present in it and to avoid also the new growth of microbes. So students you have seen in your market the milk that is available like Amul that they are all pasteurized milk which are preserved with the, this method. So the next method is dehydration. Actually dehydration is a process in to remove water from something. So, as you know, water increases moisture and moisture provides uh, suitable condition for the growth of microbes. So, a variety of food materials like raisins, fenugreek or cauliflower like vegetables, they are preserved for longer duration by this method known as dehydration in which water is removed from these materials whether by sun drying or by smoking method. Next method is by using salt and with sugar also some food materials are stored and preserved because this high concentration of salt and sugar absorbs water from the food materials and since the water is not available there the microbes do not uh, multiply there and they do not grow in such type of food materials like you have seen jams and jellies and meat and fish are sometimes preserved by using salt and sugar method. Next method is using oil and vinegar. You might have seen your mother while mixing more and more oil during the preparation of pickles and use of vinegar or acetic acid to preserve some food materials at your home. Actually these are going to check or inhibit the growth of microbes in our food materials so they can be preserved for longer duration. So few vegetables, fruits, meat and fish can be preserved for longer duration by using oil and vinegar. So next method to preserve our food materials is by heating and canning. Students, some food materials can be stored by heating them at 110 degrees Celsius temperature for about 30 minutes because this kills all the microbes present in food materials and then these food materials are stored in metallic cans but during the storing process the air is removed out from the cans and the vacuum is created there so that to inhibit the growth of new microbes. So you have seen a number of a variety of food materials that are available in the market which are packed inside the metallic cans. So the next method is by using food preservatives. Actually some chemical substances are used to preserve our food for longer duration and these chemical substances are known as food preservatives and the method of preserving food by these chemicals is known as chemical preservation. So you can see here some examples like sodium benzo A and potassium bi potassium metabisulfide which are used to preserve our fruit juices or squashes available in the market. So by utilizing these chemical substances also we can check or inhibit the growth of microbes and our food materials can last for longer duration. The last method of preserving food materials is vacuum packaging. Students you have seen a lot of snacks available in the market which are filled in vacuum packages but uh, when you are going to open them you will see that uh, some thing is going to come out like air 
but actually that is not air that is the nitrogen gas that is filled there inside the packages to preserve our food materials because air allows the growth of microbes so while packaging of these snacks inside the packages air is removed from there and nitrogen gas is filled so many of the time question is asked there that which gas is present in the vacuum packaging available for snacks so you have to give the answer nitrogen gas now we are going to see if we are following all these methods to preserve food what will be the advantages that we will get so the first advantage of food preservation is that these methods avoid food wastage perhaps you are also practicing at your home that we are going to keep our food materials in refrigerator so that it cannot spoil and to avoid wasting the next one is what increases shelf life of food whenever we are going to preserve the food materials by any of these methods so they are going to last longer and they will be not spoiled easily with the growth of microorganisms next point is what available during off season actually if we are going to apply all these methods the food can be stored for longer duration and we can use them during the off season when the food materials will not be available easily and the last one is what it makes it available at distant places because it is very easy to transport the food materials which are preserved by all these methods to each and every member of the community so that was all from today i hope if any of the question will be asked from this related topic you all will be able to answer them and at the end of the video i'll provide you few assignments related to the today's topic so i hope you all will be able to solve them so till then we will meet in the next video take care of yourself and be safe